Welcome everybody to the round two, upper two um, run of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee speed run tournament. Um, my name is Zimlik, and I'm here with my co-commentator, Razor's Edge. Hello. We're actually, so tonight we have the race between Amber, uh, Kingdrubs, a.k.a. Matt, and then Iron. Should be a good race. Yeah, it looks like, um, so Amber's coming into this with a, I think is the upper seed of all of this, with a 303 in um, their first race. Uh, King Trubs is the second one with 311, and Iron is coming in very close with still a 314 as their current race time. So it should be a fairly close race looking at their current times. I think we're just starting to get into the game. And here we go. So I imagine most people in chat know what's going on, but um, the first, I mean, we start off pretty with our typical opening scene that's very reminiscent of Pokemon Yellow or Red or Blue with Oak introducing um, one of the main changes in this game compared to the other ones, along with a long list of quality of life updates, is that you start off with your either Pikachu or Eevee starting out as your first Pokemon. And... Um, we just wait to get into the game after the long opening cutscene. Long opening cutscene's no joke. <laughs> yeah. This is as we go like three minutes in before you can finally move. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you immediately get stopped to do more things. Yep. And you'll notice as soon as the runners come out of this first opening cutscene, they'll immediately menu, set up all their fast animations, um, no changing Pokemon, fast text, everything to make it quick, and allowing them to skip some cutscenes, which I think there's like three or four. There's a couple, but <laughs> it doesn't actually do anything. It really doesn't. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there's some that are actually like, that it definitely helps with, like the ghastly cutscene later. Oh yeah. In Tower, but like a lot of these there are cutscenes that you can't even skip. It's like, why give us skippable cutscenes if we can't skip them? Yeah, and the cutscenes you can skip seem very strangely placed throughout the game. Oh man. Yeah, Amber with a very, very fast menu. Oh yeah. Gonna get our first catch of the game, which for new Amber and Trubs will be the Eevee, which really only affects most of the early game. I think about the first third of the game, there's a big difference between the Pikachu run, but afterwards they'll start to line up once they get their um, main starter or their main Pokemon. So with Let's Go, you'll notice we have a tracker right in the bottom right of the layout. Um, Let's Go has gym requirements to get into every gym. In order to get into Koga's gym, you have to have 50 unique Pokemon. Which is why we have the tracker to be able to keep track of which Pokemon we have. So a large part of this run will be routing a catch, like a catch route so we can guarantee we have 50. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's almost, I've heard described as a um, randomizer at some sorts, because you're just kind of 
playing with what you got and routing on the fly on what you're going to catch later versus what you have now it really makes for a pretty interesting speedrun. But yeah. Um, and then some of the other gym requirements. So Koga has the 50 gym requirements. The first gym requirement you're going to see with Brock is that each of the players has to have either a water or a grass Pokemon. And the only thing you can catch is a grass Pokemon. In Eevee, it'll be Bellsprout. In Pikachu, it'll yep. be Oddish. And you can't actually catch a water Pokemon unless you trade before Brock, which isn't allowed in this category. So you'll be seeing our owners trying to pick up those as they go into the forest. So Amber and Trubs both check the nature. Doesn't look like Iron is. Iron's just going straight in. Ooh. Did you have to see the natures on this? I I didn't. I did miss those. Same. I'm so not quite sure with Pikachu, but for Eevee, you're typically looking for Naive above. for Amber, okay. They're okay. Naive is... It's okay. <laughs> We've seen better, for sure. Oh, yes. Yeah, so typically when you're looking at your Pokemon, you're looking for the natures, which give a... Most of them give a positive to mm -hmm. one stat and a negative to another one. And we're looking for things that increase Eevee's attack, special attack, or speed. Um, yeah. Negative in Amber's case, attack. yeah, in Amber's case, she is plus speed and minus speed off, ah. which is actually really good. Yeah, it'll make some of the checks earlier, or some of the ranges later better. But she'll be looking for a lot of the AVs for the attack and special attack stats. Yeah, that would be really handy. I didn't quite see what the characteristic was. With Pika, you can figure out what your nature is right after you face the Raddit, like the Rattata on Route 1. Mm-hmm. Um, Eevee, you get one less EXP, literally one less, so you don't get the level on the rat. You have to wait until you get past the Caterpie in Forest before you can actually level up. Yes. And that's assuming you don't catch a Pokemon right before the Forest, which really throws off checking your stats. Amber with a classic three-turn fight. Not with the same. And it looks like it's going to be a four turn for iron. Thankfully, no one paired during that during any of those fights, because if you get a status, there is status lag sometimes, which can just make a fight go slower. Yeah, you'll put all your inputs in and then you'll be sitting there for a couple seconds waiting for yep. something to happen. It's especially bad on Eevee if you get paralyzed because then you have a 50-50 shot of not even being able to move. Oh yeah. It's a good way to waste a lot of time. It is. Amber and Matt cleanly through Route 1, no encounters. So in this game, you'll see encounters spawn on the overworld. So you get to see all of the Pokemon. Unlike a lot of the earlier Pokemon games where they were inside of the grass and you would randomly get an encounter, you wouldn't know. Here you got to see them all, which makes things rather nice. But by the same token, they can also spawn right on top of you and there's nothing you can do about it. There are many times where you have some sort of landmine Pokemon that pops up right in front of you, and there's mm -hmm. no avoiding it. Nope. 
especially, it's especially in, like, about if it's like an onyx <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you have like one of the biggest hit boxes in the game yeah it's oh, fun yeah. especially in the cave where you might also hit a trainer at the same time it's just mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, okay, so Ember's gonna go right for the bug. Looks like Matt is going to as well. Sweet. And yeah, and as we approach the forest, there's um a couple of Pokemon we're looking for. We're looking for both the bugs, Caterpie and Weedle. And they'll be looking for a Pikachu for the Eevee runners. And sometimes, very rarely, a Bulbasaur will spawn. And then they'll also be looking for those grass Pokemon, so Oddish and Bellsprout. But the main Three are kind of the grass, Pokemon, and your two bugs. So the other big check, besides getting your grass Pokemon for the Eevee runners, is going to be hitting the crucial level 10. So at level 10, um, Eevee learns Double Kick, which allows us to get through on it, or gets Brock, through Brock's gym. It gives us a super effective move against the Rock type, which um, allows us to clear it. Whereas I think Pikachu, they're going to use Oddish in that fight, so it doesn't Correct. quite matter the level of the Pikachu. Yeah, Pika gets the Oddish because it's a special attacker, unlike Bellsprout, which is a physical attacker. And Rock yeah. types are very physically bulky, but also very specially weak. So using Oddish just makes sense there. Oh, um, yeah. The Bellsprout, it's actually slower to use Bellsprout than it is to use an Eevee. Amber coming up on, for Eevee, the first major fight that can, it's it's really straightforward. It's just tackle times two on a Pidgey, but this Pidgey happens to have Sand Attack, which will lower your accuracy. And if you start, if they start spamming Sand Attack and you start missing, you can lose a lot of time real fast. Yes. Ideally, you get tackle much like Amber did there, so they're fine. But I have had times where I've lost about two and a half minutes to that fight alone. That was a great way to start the run. Oh yeah, I lived on two HP, it was fun. <laughs> so after we get to this EV fight, you're going to see um, all of them pick up an item called a lure. Um, for those of you who don't know, the lure makes Pokemon who spawn in the area after the lure is popped um, the max level plus one of any Pokemon in the area, which allows for more experience when catching them, and it allows you to get closer to your Evo levels. Yep. So there they go into menu, popping lures. And it's important for them to note which Pokemon have already spawned because it doesn't change their levels, it only changes new spawns. Correct. And Matt with the rare, like with a 1% Beedrill on the screen. It's not an easy catch. No, it is not. <laughs> I don't recommend going for it. No, 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 no. Meanwhile, Iron having unlock, like not getting lucky with anything spawning that they need. Yeah. So anything that's not caught in the forest, you can also go through the building past the forest and um, catch them later in the patch of grass outside, but you still want to make sure it's lured. And if you catch them there, you can get a little more XP, but it's a riskier patch of grass just because not as much spawns. So it's like both Amber and Trubs have their Bellsprout. Yep. And that gets Matt to the level 10. Okay, so he is plus speed minus special attack. He's a jolly. Ouch. He's, he'll he'll be fast, easy. but the minus special attack is going to be bad for the late mid game. Oh, yeah. 
to make our game corner not great. My special attack is not great on Eevee. You don't like to see that. It'll be interesting to see if he pulls out um, Nido King strats for that area just because of the minus special attack. Mm -hmm. My bet is he'll try to get a level 25 Rhyhorn and go for the plus two drill run. Yeah. So you can see on iron screen, um, he's looking for those spawns in the grass, and each grass patch can also spawn one more while the lure is active, and I think right here you can get a total of four? Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And he finds his Oddish. Yeah, see, on Pika, you either want to get Oddish first, or get it last on Route 2, because Route 2 guarantees it'll be level 9, if you get it inside a forest, it'll be a level 7 on Allure. And at level 9, then you're guaranteed to one-shot the... Um, Geodude, and your range, depending on your special attack, to one-shot the Onyx on Brock. Looks like Amber's having to pick up a rat on 2 to hit that um, level 10. So they will either have to pick up Eradicate later, or the Rattata will just lock them out of that Eradicate if they don't see one. Yeah. My bet is they'll go for a Eradicate. Yeah. Looking for one around Route 10 or something. Matt does at least have a Pikachu, but... It took a while for it to finally attack. Yeah. Just kept spinning around, which meant throwing a ball doesn't help a lot. It's kind of annoying in that aspect. You you almost have to wait for it to attack. Yeah. And then Iron is going to be our first one out of the forest into Feeder City to go fight Brock. Amber also choosing to go right for a Pidgey. Okay. Trying to get that early XP. So the other thing is... Yeah, so the other um, thing is you'll see some of the Pokemon glowing. If they're glowing blue, they're considered tiny. If they're glowing red, they're considered large. All that means for us is that they are worth more XP. So by catching those, you get more XP. Um, as well as using a second player allows for sync catches. So you'll see the um, each of the runners summoning that two-player controller, which makes it easier to catch, as well as gives more XP. So they'll be doing that throughout the game. And then there's a rare chance that you can get extra large or extra tiny, but you won't really notice that until you catch them. Yep. And those are even more XP. Matt, meanwhile, now already has Eevee at 13 and will have both bugs fully evolved. Ooh. And then Iron quickly getting through Brock. Yeah, Matt caught a massive poke. <laughs> It was a lot of EXP. Yeah, so that's that rare chance of the large Pokemon being massive. It also happens to mean that Matt at 13 can now just double kick straight away and skip the Hell Whip on the Onyx. Yes. Yeah, so while Trubbish is behind, he's also getting these Evos, which will put him pretty close to even with Amber. Because she'll have to, or they'll have to um, change, or they'll have to evolve their Pokemon later. Correct. Yeah. That is like the majority of this game, it feels like, is sitting there waiting for a Pokemon to evolve. Yeah, 
and that just happened to get a large riot, which helped out a lot with the XP. Yeah. So much like Amber, will likely choose to go for a radicate later. Mm -hmm. And there we have Amber setting up the tail whip, dropping Onyx's defense, and then they'll double kick twice. And that'll be the end of that fight. And that'll compare to Trubbish's just double kick the Onyx twice. So we can see Iron coming out of the gym, talking to our old rival Gary and or Blue, and um, we'll go pick up, go for the first buy of the run, pick up some great balls. Um, I'm not sure about the attacks or special attacks for Pikachu, but also getting some of our cures for status moves. So Pika goes with two at two X attacks and one X special attack. Okay. Eevee just needs one of each. Largely because Eevee will get a lot of good coverage relatively like shortly like as soon as they get into Cerulean. Oh yeah. Pika meanwhile won't. And then when Iron's going through on the way to Mount Moon, they'll be looking for an Ekans. Um, the Ekans is kind of a bonus catch that doesn't always spawn. Or no, no, no. For Pika, it's Primate. Uh, it's Mankey and True Mankey. can spawn yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. For Eevee, it'll be an Ekans. Correct. And they get the both Mankey, Mankey and Sandshrew can spawn there, and both of those are really good. Yeah. Like it looks like Iron didn't. just got a Mankey. Yeah. So just looking at the catches right now, we have um, Amber has caught nine already. Um, Shrubs is at ten catches, and Iron is at seven. Let's see if they updated after the Mankey. They have. No, they have not. Yeah, they're at seven. They're at seven, yeah. Um, there's also one of the fastest acquires on the... Um, in the game is buying this magic art from this guy here. You say they stip or they'll save about 500 poke gold for this magic art and you get an easy catch. Um, it's one of the gift pokemon and there'll be two other later that they have the option of picking up in Lapras and Porygon. And those are just really easy. Yeah, it's a, it's extremely easy. So the TM we got from Brock is Headbutt, which will be taught to all three. All three will teach Headbutt. But for E, that happens to be a 70 base power stab move, which is insanely strong this early in the game. Yes. And that'll remain on EV all the way up until they hit 28, which they can choose to go for double edge. Sometimes they choose not to. Yeah, a lot of that will just depend on when they hit the double edge mark as to whether they'll go for it or not. Matt getting the nice snack on yeah. Route 3. Yeah. 
So in Mount Moon, they're, um, all the players are going to probably be picking up a Moonstone, and before each of the runs, players will typically set up so that after they pick up the moon, Moonstone, there will be, it'll cross over from one day to the next, and they have a chance, as long as they're in a menu or a Pokemon catch, to pick up another Moonstone, which allows for two different Evos. But I'm not, I think it's like a 50% chance for it to spawn or something after, on the right. day, as long as you're in a menu. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to be in a menu. Oh, you don't? Okay. Yeah. As long as you're in the room, it can respawn. Which getting the double moon spawn it double moon stone spawn is really nice because that guarantees you an extra poke. Oh yeah. But the three pokes you'll generally see everybody go for here is gonna be Geodude, Paris, and Clefairy. EXP in here is largely well EXP early game matters a lot because you do have to have level 15 just to get in a Misty's gym. So you'll see players wait instead of just going for immediate catches and not worrying about the um, getting great or nice or excellence. You'll see a lot of us waiting for the excellence just so we get the max EXP out of it. Yes, and while there are options for if you don't have level 15, you can always go up to Nugget Bridge and try to get it. It is significantly slower to go that route. It is. So it's not do or die, but it will take a chunk out of your time. We're going for the Clefairy immediately. Then Iron should be going for the Clefairy they see on the screen as well. So far, Iron and Amber having great luck with the Pokemon they need. Yeah. Down in the hole. Matt getting the Paris here. This does mean that Matt will not get the double Moonstone, but Matt also happens to have a lot of catches early. Ah, uh, and we're not getting the double moonstone. Nope. Opting to quickly deposit the pokes and then move forward and see if they can get the Paris. Iron with the Clefairy. So Clefairy is one of the more annoying catches because they just yes. jump around. But ending up nailing the excellent catch off to the side. Okay, Matt now just going directly for the Geodude. Like Amber should have enough EXP for 15, even without getting Paris. Paris or Snake definitely guarantees it. 
Yes. And the more catches you have early, the better, because then you can be able to skip things later. Yeah, you're not relying on those spawns that may or may never come, may or may not come. So you'll find players opting for more catches early. So now that Eevee knows Headbutt, they can almost one-shot anything. Are these They can one-shot these rocket trainers pretty quickly. Yes. I imagine Trubs will be able to one-shot the um, Voltorb in Magnemite with his levels. Quite possibly. Now the unfortunate thing is Okay, so Amber getting past the Voltorb quickly. The unfortunate thing is if you don't kill the Magnemite, it can potentially paralyze you. Yes, and then you have to go through the next fight being paralyzed. Amber getting through both of them, though. Nice. Matt does not have Clefairy, though. Hmm. Yeah, having 13 after the rat on Route 2 meant being able to skip Clefairy here wasn't huge. Obviously, being my special attack, Mori XP would be ideal. Yes. But knowing he can just keep moving and forgo that Pokemon Correct. is also nice. Magnemite. And he will also one-shot it. Yeah, Amber to 15. Meanwhile, Iron opting for the early Zubat. Which and does... Matt's gonna is Matt gonna catch? He is. Gonna catch Matt's gonna the catch Onyx. the Moon Onyx. Oof. One percent Onyx. Oh, I'll break out. So one of the reasons Onyx is so hard to catch for anybody who doesn't play this is that the box is up. Most of the Pokemon you throw straight or kind of the Pokeball falls down and that's fine. But Onyx is a little harder to hit because he's moving around and yep. upwards. And Onyx is going to run away. And then Amber picking up the PP up and the bush to sell later. Oh, he gets it. Balls. That nice. Onyx was about to run away there if he nah. didn't immediately throw and hit it. He gets lucky and gets it in the ball. Okay, now Amber's about to teach three different moves to Eevee. The first is going to be a 90 base power special water move and bounty bubble that will basically act like a Giga Drain and heal you for half the damage that you deal. Um, we also then have a special Buzzy Buzz, which is a 90 base power electric move, which will always paralyze. And then you have a 90 base power physical fire type move in Sizzly Slide that will always burn. Yes, and there's a lot of interesting combinations that we'll, we'll use later on trainers where we you take the burn or the heals into effect to set us up for later fights or to set it up so we don't take as much damage. And it allows for a lot of really clever routing. It really does.
I will say learning this game and looking at how these routings, it's just like this is insane people coming up with like the ways to make it work. Using the burns or the paralyze to make you faster than the Pokemon. It's very interesting. Yep. So the move that Pika will get, so all th both games get a move there in Cerulean that you can automatically teach. Pika only gets one, which will be a 50 base power electric type move in Zippy Zap, but that has priority and will always crit. So not really 50 base power. <laughs> no. It's 75 ba off of stab and then it's always going to crit. Matt's also going to grab the PP up here. You'll notice he'll grab the PP up rather than the original any percent route that actually sells the fossil. They're opting to keep the fossil in the party and not sell it later as an option for another Pokemon if they need it. Gotcha. And then Matt is picking up three Great Balls, which Amber skipped. Yeah, Matt needed to grab the extra Great Balls after the, the Onyx. Onyx. Amber on to Misty here. Starmie, you won't generally always kill here with the Eevee. Um, you'll always get outsped. Starmie's insanely fast, especially this early. Um, and it has a move called Scald that has a 30% chance to burn. Which, if it does burn, you'll have to heal the burn outside of battle. Thankfully, Amber is able to dodge the burn and doesn't have to worry about the extra menu. It won't be the last time we see a Starmie use Skull in this run. No, it will not be. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a, just another use of using the Buzzy Buzz to get a Paralysis on Starmie, which then halves the speed, so then you outspeed the Starmie on the next turn. Yep. This is also a case of such an early gym having a high BST Mon. Mm-hmm that you just don't have access to. Oh, yeah. Which is why, pretty much across the board, Missy's been one of the hardest early game gyms in the franchise. Starmie has a high base special attack and a high base speed, and you don't have access to either. No, and you don't really have good access to Pokemon who can deal with it outside of getting Buzzy Buzz. And Zippy Zot. Or Zippy Zap, yeah. <laughs> Like, without these electric moves, it, Misty would be an absolute nightmare to take down. Because she also happens to have Psy Wave, which would be super effective against Bellsprout and Oddish. Oh, yes. Amber having a clean rival. Meanwhile, Matt and I are neck and neck. Yeah. Matt does have an extra Pokemon, but both are immediately going into the Misty fight. Pikachu might not get as might not get as much access to moves, but it is a lot quicker to only learn one move over three. This is true. So able to catch up a little bit with that. It does catch up a little bit with that, but then it quickly loses time oh, yes. <laughs> on the Nugget Bridge. Because Eevee just has access to the Stab Headbutt as well as all the coverage. Oh, unlucky. Iron getting the burn and didn't kill the Starmie, which is a range, by the way. But able to pick it up pretty quickly with the quick attack. Yes. So Iron will have to heal the burn here. So one out of Thankfully, three Para does half the speed, so you'll always outspeed the Starmie after you paralyze it. And Pika with priority with Zippy Zap is fine. Yes. Yes, Amber's making quick work of these trainers on Nugget Bridge. Like you mentioned, they just have... You have an answer to everything with these... You, you really do. 
Yeah. Having th having a water, fire, and electric type move as well as a 70 base power stab move. It it's just insanely broken on Eevee. It really is. And as you go along Nugget Bridge, you can heal back up to full before this last rocket. Correct. Leader. Just using the buzzy bubble. Or bubble bubble. Yeah. The bubble. The Meowth here, though, has a move called Fake Out, which is priority. Sometimes it won't always go for it, and you can be able to skip it, like Amber does there. Nice. And it just saves a turn. So that saves about six seconds. But it, it usually likes to go for Fake Out there. Meanwhile, Iron getting a nice flinch on the Oddish. That Oddish does have poison powder, so it can poison the Pikachu. So getting the flinch guarantees that you're clean. For as different as the routes are between Pikachu and Eevee, they are insanely close in times. Oh, yeah. There are parts where Eevee is just flat out faster than Pika, but likewise, there are parts where Pikachu is flat out faster than Eevee, and they just kind of match up. So after so because, the, what was that? So because Pikachu doesn't have the um spread that Eevee does, you'll find Pikachu largely depends on other Pokemon from Growlithe to Nidoking to help out in two controller fights. Um Eevee will use two controller fights just to help make fights go faster and more optimal, but doesn't always have to use them. Let's see. Will Amber see any Pokemon? There is a Meowth. Yes. But... Oh, and she will opt to go for it. They will go for the... Getting the Meowth here is really nice. It's just an extra poke early. Mm -hmm. And it's a nice, easy catch with a single Great Ball. So Zim, like, do you want to explain like one controller, two controller, and how that works? Um. So, actually, no. You you go. <laughs> you, you take it. <laughs> so, let's go. Uses the Joy Cons from the Switch. Um, which we actually have to use motion controls through all of the catches. Um, because we have two separate Joy Cons, they're now being acted on as two separate controllers. Essentially. So if you have at least two Pokemon in your party that are alive um, and you're on the ground, so is if you're not flying and if you're not surfing, you can call in the second controller on either catches, which you'll find we use just to help make catches easier well, makes them easier and there makes them more likely to catch and then two we'll use those on fights to help use a one of them to set up like an axe item um which basically in this game gives you plus two of ever of any of your stats so like x attack doubles your attack and keeps the original pricing so they're insanely cheap but insanely strong So we'll use one control, like we'll use two controllers largely throughout. But if you're flying or if you're in the water, you have to only one C. And luckily, that only happens once in the run, where we're yeah, pretty much route twenty-one on the way down into Cinnabar. Yep. Otherwise, we'll try to keep a second Pokemon in our party just to make the catches much, much more likely to get in the ball.
and the ball on both care um both controllers matters as well yes so it you'll does. see them in order to balance the great balls they'll probably add those in later originally we didn't think they the second controller mattered at all and then further science and data mining proved otherwise so we will now use double great balls over a great ball pokeball combo just to make the catch far more likely So you'll see, or just past, Trubs um, skipping those two trainers. Trainers in this game have terrible vision, and it's coming up on Iron's screen as well. But you can basically cheese these two trainers by walking straight through them, basically. You can kind of cut. I think their vision's basically one pixel across, so... Correct. If you time it, if you time it right, or you position correctly, you can skip them and not worry about it. And we'll see something... Very similar going into Vermilion, skipping two trainers that are looking right at each other. Yeah, the vision in this game, like they literally have basically a one pixel vision directly ahead of them. So we will use that to our advantage and be able to dodge Pokemon like trainers that you would think would somehow see you, but thankfully they don't. Their vision is kind of really bad. We'll definitely see that in Erica's gym where you can walk through the and entire in Victory gym Road. and not be seen. Oh, in Victory Road, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we will see we will see that played out throughout this run in multiple places. Amber's already through it, but Trubs and Iron are both in the right around the first cutscene skip, which is just Bill getting transfer transformed back into a human from a Pokemon. Which happens to be, well, one of the funnest meme categories in this game is Ditch Bill, where we'll essentially blitz to here, and then we won't help him out at all. We'll just leave. <laughs> But we'll help him this time because he does give us the SS tickets to help advance the game. Yes. Amber is moving on to the next big catch area. Um, they'll be looking for the Popalure after going through the underground tunnel, and they'll be looking for a Vulpix, Jigglypuff, and potentially an Abra if they get the nice rare spawn. Yeah, getting Abra is huge. It's yeah. such a good encounter. Key with Abra in this game is you can't approach it from the front. If, it, if you walk towards it front, it'll teleport away and make it un make you unable to catch it. Which gets very, very annoying. It does, especially when you happen to see it off the corner of your screen as it disappears. Yep. Or it spawns directly in front of you, facing you. You're like, no! <laughs> I I've had that happen way too many times in different runs, especially in like AOPs or diplomas, and you're like, why do you have to do that to me? Amber's got the Jigglypuff and Vulpix right next to each other, so that's right. quite nice. So Jigglypuff you want to throw immediately because it loves to just bounce around, so you just immediately go for the throw right out the gate. Which for Amber, thankfully, puts them puts the EV at 19, which will almost certainly hit 20 before the rival fight. Typically, you want to be about 18 leaving this area, so they are well above that. Yeah, Amber's EXP is really good here. Trubs and Iron still neck and neck.
We'll likely see Matt and Iron going for the Pidgey here on Route 6. Okay, and we're cleanly through the Route 6 tape. So those two nice. trainers there, their vision, they, they're looking directly at each other. There's basically a perfect tile where if you walk right in the middle of them, you just dodge their vision and you're you're fine. But if you're a little bit left or right of it, you will get hit. Thankfully, they're both easy one turn, like single poke trainers. It's not very f slow. Like you'll lose 35, 40 seconds, but... It's not a massive loss. Yeah. Matt getting the Abra. Nice. And that skip is a lot easier getting out of the town than it is getting in. Because on the when you're leaving, you can just stand straight in the middle of the tile as you walk up. Correct. So Iron getting the Vulpit, like the Growlithe here, that they will use in the second slot to help out with the Pika. Because, oddly enough, at level 17, Growlithe has Flamethrower. Hmm. Which will help Pika get past the gloom and other pokes. is moving on to SSN, which at this point we just we're only here to fight the rival and get cut or the equivalent of cut. So in this game, instead of having to get HMs to teach to Pokemon, Eevee learns special moves. So we get a cut version, we get a surf, um, strength. So we don't have to carry an extra Pokemon, we just use Eevee to accomplish these tasks or Pikachu. Right. Also getting the skip as well as trubs. So this is a good example of using the secondary Pokemon to buff up Eevee. Um, Correct. So we'll start with a special attack from the Bell Sprout as easy use, Eevee uses Buzzy Buzz, and then as they switch into the other moves, we'll use an X attack to either boost the Headbutt or the Slizzy Slide to um, help one shot these other the other two pokes. Getting Pikachu out second allows you to actually heal the Eevee on the Oddish here, which makes it really nice so you don't have to heal Eevee on the next route. Although he, she opts to not do that. Largely because you already have a menu on that area anyway, so that works. Yeah, that's true. You're already in there. So both Iron and Matt about to enter the SSN and go through that same fight. Yes. And Iron swapping the Growlithe into position two. To open that Which they'll use the Growlithe to take out the... Um, Oddish. Because it has Flamethrower. Meanwhile, Pika doesn't ha really have too much of a move to be able to help out. Zadish will resist both the double kick and the zippy zap. Yeah, so when Amber finishing SSN, they're going to head to my least favorite part of the run, Route 10 and Rock Tunnel. 
Route 10 is largely where good runs go to die and bad runs go to continue on. <laughs> <laughs> Route 10 is probably one of the bigger catching areas that can be... Route 10 and Rock Tunnel, yes. Punishing. But yes, this will be a, this is one of the big places that we um, lures help out. They give us that extra spawn on the grass, as well as um, I imagine most of them bought repels. And repels in other games, while you walk in the grass, you don't encounter Pokemon. In this game, they'll immediately um, wipe away any Pokemon that are on the that you can see. And so the runners will use the repel to wipe everything away, and immediately use the lure that will bring back new pokes to kind of refresh the grass area. It's a very nice way to do it. Yes. Yeah, in typical PB attempts, you'll find Route 10 and Rock Tunnel are one of the first major reset areas. But obviously, being in a race, they won't reset on these. Um, oh, Amber Unlucky with a Abra. Two Abras to the left. Oh, no. <laughs> that was an AOP or a Diploma. You would have seen Amber go for those, but... That's slow to go grab those at this point. Because <laughs> then you also have to backtrack all the way down, which is just not ideal. So Amber used the lure before she fought this trainer. That way, by the time they get to the grass area where we'll catch the Pokemon, all the Pokemon there will be lured. Um, if they do it too much closer, or if they do it closer, there are possibilities that the Pokemon could have spawned before we saw them, and they're not lured, which really is a bummer when you go to catch something that's not going to evolve in one turn. <laughs> yeah, about midway through. So this is where Route 9 and 10 kind of collide. Um, so you'll, you'll, before you even get to, I think it's the second trainer on here, it'll switch over to Route 10. So if you lure too late, you may not, like they may not have, like they may have spawned prior and you wouldn't have known about it. So we lure before we even get to Route 10 to guarantee all of them will be at 24. Because if they're not at 24, Suddenly, some of these pokes aren't one level evos. Yeah, you're gonna have to babysit them for a while. Especially like the Krabby, because that evolves Ooh. at 28. So yeah, if you Krabby's... catch it at 20, that's an eight level evo and you just choose to just not. You'll also notice that they didn't go fight um, Surge at this point, we will be back to here to fight Surge and pretty much all of the rest of the gyms. We will skip and come back towards the end. Yep. Matt seeing the puff there, which is nice. Nice. And it looks like Iron hit the optional. Ooh. Luckily, it should be a pretty quick one turn. Yeah, it's it's a super quick one turn yeah. with the zippies up. Okay, let's see where Amber ends up with this grass patch. Cannot tell you the amount of times I've hit both of those trainers not paying attention after that fight. <laughs> right. So Amber opting to Ooh. wait until four Pokemon spawn. Glowing Nidoran female and a Nidoran male. Yeah, getting both Nidos is huge here. Which you'll find Amber opting to, more than likely opting to use the Moonstone on the need male Nido. Because Nido King with Poison Jab will one shot the Laveri later, which has Metronome, which basically allows it to use any move at random. 
You don't know what it will be. That can be a major time loss. Yes, it can. <laughs> as well as a major PP sync for moves. I I've seen it go boom. Yeah. I've seen uh, it go boom. I've well also been a lower level than it before and mm -hmm. have it use guillotine and kill me. <laughs> yes. It can do all sorts of awful things. Yes, it can. I've gotten minimize into sand attack into just wasting all sorts of terrible time. <laughs> And it's so while some of these pokes are optional for EV, you can skip one of the Nitos, even though Nito King will help. It is crucial for Pikachu to catch one of the Nitos. They need them to Correct. get through um, the game corner. Otherwise, it's not really going to happen. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> And Nido King will be better than Nido Queen because of the poison jab. All except one fight, which I think Nido Queen wins with bite or crunch. Ah, uh, crunch. I think hip, yeah, the hypno fight. Yes. So be looking for. I've never really used the Nido Queen. I, I, I'm, I've always just gone the Nido King strats. Needle Queen is a lot faster. It has a higher base attack stat. Ah. Needle Queen's just bulkier. Two Feroes. Amber now going for the Repel and then Lure. And getting the quick Krabby. Nice. Amber will keep in the party until level 28, so it evolves, and that gets Amber a nice two Pokemon. Krabby is also one of those annoying catches, if it decides to dance it, it around. It is. It loves to just bounce around, and it's just, it, it gets really annoying. Yeah. going for a two-player setup on this rat. Amber electing to just move forward and not worry about getting the Spiro or the potential Raticate. Now, obviously, after this fight, it does despawn and then respawn all the different Pokemon, so it's a nice spot to just basically repel or without having to use any of them. Yes. Yeah, cutscenes act like repels. They despawn everything and bring everything back. So Iron now with both female Nido and the Spiro will want to get the male Nido if they can. The big glowing Nido as well is a lot of XP. <laughs> yes, it is. That's in Nidorino, not the male Nido. Amber opts to not go check the patch again and just head on into Rock Tunnel. And quickly sees a Meow, well, a Machop. Nice. Which again is a level 28 Evo, so that will also stay in the party. Looks like Matt's just gonna go for the Knit Arena. As we get into Rock Tunnel, one of the crucial pokes we're looking for is Raghorn. Um, 
So some of the pokes in the game you can um, use as ride Pokemon. And Rhyhorn is one of the faster, and we will replace him later in the game with um, a Rapidash. But we will use him all the way until the point where we go to what well, was the bike road. Uh, it's Route 17. Route 17, there we go. Zubat. And Rhyhorn's just faster than walking. Yes. Yeah, Matt's gonna get both Need Arena and Need Arena and skip the original. Which does work because he also happened to get the Krabby. Yeah. So looking at the catch counter, we can update it once everybody gets to the rock tunnel, but we're currently at 24 for Amber, 24 for Trubs, and 20 for Iron. So Trubs is keeping pretty equal despite having to catch the two evolved forms. I think, yeah, Amber's already marked. Yes. Both Nito families. Although I don't think Matt picked up the Moonstone in Mount Moon. Oh. That may have opted to just dodge that downstairs altogether. Ooh, the Chansey. As he was walking into the rock the rocket fight. Yeah, Chansey being the rare encounter here at half a percent to spawn. But is worth so much XP. Oh, a lot of EXP. <laughs> Amber switching out the pokes that have evolved, getting in the new ones. At this point, you're almost always rotating in and out pokes to get yes. things that need XP, things that have evolved, need to get out of the party. And especially when you start getting in Krabby, Machop, and Cubone, which require multiple levels, it takes a lot of finagling to get everything properly evolved. So you'll find Amber keeping the lore up the entire way through, pretty much. Uh, it's nice the Rhyhorn right? early, which is super nice. That gets Amber the ride poke through the remainder of Rock Tunnel. Allowing them to move a lot faster. There they go, setting up the ride poke. So now we are on top of Ride Horde. Trubs now go it heading into Rock Tunnel. And gets the King is gone. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> the 1% encounter that everybody hates in AOP. I will say Rock Tunnel is one of the <laughs> one of the areas we use a lot for using EV special move as well. We use Burn to make sure we don't take as much damage because Burn halves the attack of Pokemon, and we'll use Paralysis to get become faster on the next turn, as well as using Bouncy Bubble to heal. It just yep. allows us a lot of good movement or good move use to get through Rock Tunnel.
Yeah, getting the insta Kanga, it, it's this is not the run where you'd want that to happen. You want to ha see that happen in either Diploma or AOP, which is a single player catch them all. So as you actually have to get the Kanga, it's like being able to get it instantly saves so much time because it's a single percent. Oh yeah. But Matt, looks like he's going to elect to dodge the Kanga catch altogether. Huh. Meanwhile, Amber getting 4,800 EXP. <laughs> Graveler is a chunk of XP. It's like a getting big, big a massive a Graveler there is so <laughs> nice because I immediately gets Amber a 27 on Machop and Krabby both. And gets 28 on Eevee for the double edge. And with Rhyhorn at 26, Rhyhorn is going to be very likely to be able to plus two kill the J and J Arbuck. Yeah, they are set up quite nicely on XP. Seconds you buy him from Matt because he's good. <laughs> not wrong, Jordan. Not wrong. Also getting the chancy. Amber depositing the Nido King there. Hmm. With this level, may opt to just dodge that entirely. Yeah, with easy. Because double edge much. does also kill the a fairy. Yeah. With Eevee being that level, that's probably a lot faster just to keep the Eevee and go. It, yeah, more than likely. Yeah, teaching the double edge will. Amber will be able to just dodge that, and that actually opens another spot in the party for Cubone, should Amber get Cubone. Trub's getting the Graveler. And Iron getting a Cubone. Nice. Now you can get Cubone in Pokemon Tower, which is just a single level Evo, but nothing really likes to spawn there. So while it is optimal to get a Tower Cubone, you don't want to plan on it. So if you see Cubone in Rock Tunnel, you just go for the catch. Even Ghastly doesn't really want to spawn there. No, it doesn't. So the fight Amber's on is one of the another one of the more dangerous if you're not appropriate leveled with the um, Alakazam and Vulpix because the Vulpix can burn you turn one and then you have to summon another character to heal the burn so you can still one shot the or the Kadabra. And the Kadabra has Psybeam, which can confuse you. Yes. It's a very straightforward fight. It's a very easy fight, but it can absolutely troll. Amber quickly getting the cube on there. Nice. So all three players do have the right horn. And Matt seeing another Kanga. 
Holy crap. <laughs> There we go. There's the right horn. Matt dodging the Kangas. Considering he wants to do an AOP race later this weekend, I do believe that might just come back to bite him in the butt. Let's say, I think that's all of his left for Kangas guns. <laughs> Amber on the last fight of Rock Tunnel, which we use to heal up Eevee with that bouncy bubble to heal up before the rival fight. Yes. And because it has Faint, which is a priority move, you just set up an X special attack. And then you just bouncy bubble times two. Matt probably just going with the one controller version of this fight. When Amber went for the two controllers, just setting up an X special and then the bouncy bubbling both. You'll find Matt probably opting for the well Sizzly slide here to have the attack on the Machop. So you survive the incoming brick break and then you'll bouncy bubble the Rhyhorn when it comes in. You can also heal up a little bit on the matchup with a bouncy bubble. All obtainable Pokemon, which is basically a single player catch them all, with the exception of not getting the trades or version exclusives from the other game. So AOP catches 135. Um, Diploma, basically, both players have to get all 150. Time for tower rival fight. This is this can be played a couple of different ways, but typically it's set up EV to do Buzzy Buzz on Pidgeotto, and eventually set up EV to do um, Sizzly Slide on Gloom. But the last two Pokemon can come out in either way. They can. So if it comes out Rhyhorn like like right you next on okay. this, you'll X attack the Rhyhorn and then Drill Run. You can also risk using the Drill Run and Bouncy Bubble the right you correct you could actually also set up to plus two and just double edge but yeah that deals a lot more damage because double edge you also take recoil so being able to just add to that and heal in fight just makes sense well actually no you still have to heal out of fight because you have an x attack for the ev yeah did i just see yet another kanga on matt's screen my Matt with all the Kangas. <laughs> pretty sure that was two. I'm pretty sure that was three. It might have just been two. I know I saw a large Pokemon to the right of the screen, right as he was leaving. I wasn't sure if that was Kanga or not. It might have been like a Onyx, but. That was a third Kanga, my goodness. Yeah, Amber already getting Kingler this early. That's insane. Yeah. Kingler Machoke this early is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Jordan, I'm happy with that. Let him get all of, like let him get rid of all of them now so that when I face him later this weekend, I can get the early Kanga and yeah, we're fine. <laughs> that would that would be nice. I I'd be happy with that. Yeah. Not getting Rhyhorn immediately spawned on, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that, the Pokemon spawning but, right up onto you, especially with Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn has such a big hitbox that you start running It really more does. Big. Onyx is easily the worst of the hitboxes. It's so big. Oh, yeah. It can block an entire pass, so you don't have an option but to run into it. 
Yes, I was doing a run yesterday, and I had two Onyxes blocking a choke. Oh. And I was like, well, here we go. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> Jordan, don't put that juju on me. Hello? You're supposed to give me all the luck here. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, Matt now going into the rival fight. Gordon's also joining the AOP race just on <laughs> Swish AOP, jeez. That just sounds like pain. Greta should join it though. So Amber approaching the metronome fight, which luckily for them, they will not have to see the metronome. Yeah, being able to dodge metronome is super nice. So just double edge here. It will require a heal before the Radicate in Yeah, the game corner. You join if it was diploma, AOP requires you to be good balled by yourself. I mean I mean, we can just do diploma, I'm okay with that. We haven't even done our diploma, Greta. <laughs> and we're going around the thick grass, dodging. So you can opt to go through the grass patch in the middle, which is a little slower, but if you're low on pokes, you can pick up a couple there, as well as you can pick up a Firestone. Okay, Iron also through Rock Tunnel with 31 pokes. I'd say solid catch count without it, like, coming out. Anywhere from like 30 to 33 is usually about right. I was say, as of now, all of them have 31 caught. Um, Amber's going to pick up another Eevee move, which is Glitzy Glow. It's a psychic move, so it'll be really good against all our poison types in Game Corner. And it also has this bonus effect of setting up a light screen, which will help against any special attacks. And then do you want to talk about this medium lady? <laughs> so this medium lady gives you the option of setting the natures for every Pokemon that will set that will spawn for the remainder of the day. So we set for Modest, which is plus special attack, minus attack, because we will be maining Starmie on the back half of the run, which is a special attacker. It has zero attack, doesn't need it anyway. So we just opt for the Modest. It's just the base, best nature for it. Yes, and for the low, low price of 10,000 gold or money, they will do, she will do that for you. Nature lady sounds like time lost to me. I mean, look, Spider. I mean, you, 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 you could be Joker and just go quiet, right? <laughs> Problem with not setting the nature is you don't know what nature you're gonna get on Starmie, and you do want plus special attack to guarantee ranges later. Yes, and you have enough problems trying to get your IVs to line up properly. But yes, you do. <laughs> rolling my, my nature. Because <laughs> even at plus six on Lance, with plus special attack, depending on your special attack IV, you may not be guaranteed to kill the Dragonite. Oh, yeah. So a neutral just won't, straight up won't kill it. And they're crossing your fingers on a range, hoping you don't roll unlucky. 
I mean, I, I've, I've accidentally not set once, and I ended up with an adamant star. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> it was the absolute worst, so I just stopped. And I'm like, nope, bye. Reset. Good night, nice on the start of the run. <laughs> it was so <sighs> Like, let's just casually have a plus attack my special attack star. It's fine. Jump's resetting this area. See if he can roll. Picking up the Pidgey. Yeah. Interesting choice going for the Pidgey here instead of going for it on Route 17. Yeah. Because on 17, that would have guaranteed you Pidgeot. At this point, Amber is just going through game corner, double edging most pokes to knock them out. Pretty much one shots a lot of things. You have to use X attacks here and there to bolster it, but makes for a pretty quick clear. Matt now also going to set the nature. Meanwhile, Iron is just going to quickly take out the Clefairy with the Needle King with Poison Jab. Because in this, the fairy is a fairy type, so it is weak to the poison. This is a Gen 7 game. And just double edge the... Well, 30 double edge actually kills that? Wow. I didn't know. I'd have thought that would have just been go plus special, like two controller, X special attack, and let's see the. Yeah. That's good to know. <laughs> so I believe, does Pikachu pick up the Firestone in the grass patch there for the Growlithe Evo? More often than not. Gotcha. Having that fire stone there just gives you an extra poke guaranteed later if you absolutely need it. And ideally, you don't have to stone Evo, because that is, you have to worry about taking the time to put it in the party, then evolve it, then take it out. So it's like a 45 second Evo instead of 30, 35 seconds. But. But as backup. It is a solid backup, yeah. Which, I mean, you can choose to just get the one in Mansion if you absolutely need it. Which I do believe is actually faster. But if you don't have Abra, you can also have Abra spawn there on Route 7, so it's not the worst option in the world. Amber coming up to some one of the more danger, dangerous fights of the next Jesse and James. Yeah, but having a level 26 or 27 Rhyhorn at this point should all but guarantee a plus two. Unless, of course, the Rhyhorn is minus attack. Or it misses. Well, that too, but it's a 95% accurate, so it's more yeah. than likely to hit. I hope I didn't just jinx it, though. I might have. <laughs> if I did, I'm sorry, Amber. <laughs> Being able to just one shot that our book on the J and J fight can guarantee a two shot like a two turn fight, which is just so fast. Yeah, it's really nice. It is a range as long as you're not minus attack on the like you have to be at least level twenty five with the right horn and not minus attack. Which is very much favored, so my bet is we'll see an X attack on the right horn here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
these last two J and J fights with Eevee are dicey if you don't have the right levels. Perfect. One shots the Arbuck, and now nice. it's just Eevee is paralyzed here, so you might just have to hit through the para. Amber instead opting to go plus four to take it out. Being paralyzed is probably the better play. Instead mm -hmm. of having a 50 50 shot. It would have been just been faster if it, if Amber would have gotten the power of love and just healed out of like auto healed out of the para. And then you can just go glitzy glow and throw run, then you're fine. But it's not worth the risk. Clean two turn fight. Nice. Now it has to heal going into the archer fight. This is also where we will, because Matt is minus special attack. I'm almost certain we will see a plus two throw run on the right horn. Remember, cleanly through the archer, and this is well where the new route changes from what the original route was. The original route ran a two controller fight here on the um on the Giovanni fight. But now we're going with single controller, and we're just gonna straight up X attack because it's almost always going to go with fake out, which will automatically flinch and does have priority. So it gives us a free setup. And then we'll hit the Persian with Sizzly Side, guaranteeing the burn and having the attack. So you'll be able to live two slashes. Yes, one of the more interesting strats was making Graveler a bomb and blowing up the Persian with explosion. <laughs> yeah, but to do that, you had to go double X attack. Oh and yeah, then... it wastes a lot of time, but... <laughs> it, it was still faster than the original strat. Which went to plus three, I do believe. No, plus four. Now, once you get to the pair or the Persian, easily clean up on the Rai Rhyhorn and finishing the game corner. Job's going in the mm -hmm. J and J fight. Meanwhile, Iron, you'll notice, swapped into a first and second slot of Rhyhorn and Nido King, leaving Pikachu out of the fight on J and J. So they'll largely use the exact same strat that Eevee just did, mm -hmm. using yep. X attack on the Rhyhorn and then Drill Run. And Trevor's got the one shot on the Arbok. And healed through the power of love, the para. That is perfect. And then you just glitzy glow and right, like, drill run it. He X attacks again. I think just because of the negative. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That does make sense. Did miss it there. This will be an easy glitzy glow cleanup. It is a range to kill that. At Glitzy Glow Plus. 
go run, so... Amber starting to go through Pokemon Tower. So while we're here, we're trying to catch at least a Gasly. It'll help us one, get an extra poke, which will evolve he'll also evolve in one level, as well as use it to outspeed the Snorlax in just a bit. Correct. So this is another case of the of these trainers having a single tire vision because you can dodge that trainer down on the bottom that Amber just dodged. Thankfully, the trainer turned right because it can turn left there. And if it turns left, you have to hug the bottom to be able to get by. Um, or you can just wait for it to turn and then go. So the one difference on Iron Screen is while Eevee has to do two X attacks to help Rhyhorn knock off on J and J, um, Neto King can use a Helping Hand to assist, and then you only use one X attack, a Helping Hand, and it all but guarantees the yeah. winning from going down. But Eevee can, Eevee can, if you're a neutral special attack, go Blitzy Glow, Drill Run, and take out the Weezing that way. It is a range to do so, but you can do so. You don't always have to go plus four. Yeah. But in the case of Matt being minus special attack, you're just probably better off going plus four and go running the Bihorn. And then in Pokemon Tower, you'll see that. Um, while Eevee does that speed, um, the Haunter has a priority move of Sucker Punch, so it does take a little bit of chip damage off Eevee, Eevee before this last J&J &J fight. Whereas with Pikachu, you don't have to risk the Sucker Punch because you're using a priority move to take it out. So you get to go in full health. Yep. Doesn't doesn't often cause problems, but it, it can. No. <laughs> So this is a case of needing to heal off of the Persian, because if it crits, you will need to heal. Or if you're minus defense, because then you just take too much from the slash. Yeah. As long as you're a neutral defense, you'll you'll be able to live two slashes because one of them will be halved in attack. So even if it crits, you're fine. And we're getting the ghastly. And Matt quickly through the Geofony fight. Although with the negative special attack, Matt exiting right as Iron goes in. Yeah. With his minus special attack, did not one shot the Rhyhorn. No, it did not. And this is the difference here with Pika. Pika goes to plus six on the 
Pikachu. Uh. So you set up, like, you two control the device, both set up an X attack on the Pika, and Pika will zippy zap and X attack again on the Pika. And then you'll double kick the Rhyhorn with Helping Hand from the Nato King, and you're through. Just to take out that Rhyhorn with double kick, you will need to be plus six plus the right, plus Helping Hand. Everybody getting through Giovanni yep. quite easily. Meanwhile, Amber is sitting here on the second J&J &J fight. And through it. Second J&J no. &J fight, you cannot go plus two on the Rhyhorn and kill the Arbuck because the Arbuck and Weezing on that fight is a bit higher level. So unfortunately, you won't be able to do that. So you end up having to go plus two special attack on the or go X special attack on the EV and then hit the Arbuck with the Glitzy Glow. Yes, it'll be interesting to see how Trubs handles that fight with the negative special attack. It, he, it will have to take a two turn on the Arbuck unless he manages to get a crit. Backtracking for the ghastly there. Chasing ghastlies can be very dangerous in this area. It, can, it very, very can be because they can bounce right in front of somebody, like bounce right in front of a optional trainer that you end up hitting, and that's just slow. Yeah. And now it wants to run away. So when they go into their attack animation, but you still see the circle staying there, um, that's when they will try to run away. So you need to either make that catch or just simply run. That does get him the Kingler. Nice. Meanwhile, Amber here will quickly be coming up on Route 17, which is the second to last catch route, like catch, catch section, and they run. Although it is one of the last big catch areas. Yes. It's the last of the longer ones. Yeah. Ideally, like if you have a really good catch count coming into Route 7, like exiting 17, you can just catch the star you and then just be done. Which is ideal. Yeah. Looks like if Amber gets everything, they'll still need at least a coughing or a. Amber going for the. like Pidgeotto here huh. mostly because she did see it and that will guarantee a single level into the Pidgeot yes especially since they caught the early Pidgey I believe <coughs> correct so more than likely coming here on to 17 they'll want to see the Doduo Ponyta and Psyduck. All of which they'll Evo and then go into. Well, ideally, you also see the Raticate. Raticate yeah. would also be really good there. I'll get one more chance to see Raticate in the mansion. Go on 21. Yeah. The rat does not go away. Rat, you can see pretty much everywhere. Yes. Here's another trainer vision skip. Speaking of the rat, there it is.
Not now going into the saddest of the cutscenes in the run. And Iron also right into it. Yeah. They've been neck and neck for most of Iron them. and Matt are very, very close to each other. Matt does have the advantage on catches, however. Yes. So Matt is still further ahead than what it looks like right now. Good way to gauge is usually about 30 to 35 seconds per catch. Not see a gas. Did not get a gas layer haunter. No. Which will force Iron to go for the tentacle, which is unfortunate. Yes. Hey, okay, and we're quickly getting the Psyduck. Just needs the Ponyta and the Doduo now. Pony will be the. Ride poke for the rest of the run. Because it is in the fastest tier of speed. So riding a Rapidash is just far faster than... Continuing Drops. on the right horn. Drops in the J&J &J fight, setting up the X special on Eevee. That fight can be dangerous if it double targets into the Eevee slot. Yes, it can one-shot you, which is not fun ever. No, it is not. I had that in my first race. It, it, start, it went very, very bad. You start scrambling real fast. <laughs> ah, and there's the ponytail. Yeah, Ember did catch, like, did see both the pony and Doduo's fun there, so... And we're now clear. Which now also gets the Marowak and the Pidgeot. Iron's making it through the JJ fight easily as well. Yep. So you will see Amber here, Rare Candy, the Ponyta, just to guarantee that you have your Rapidash and quickly right, so that is the right poke. Having Doduo here, um, it may not get enough EXP to evolve before the blue fight, in which case you'll find Amber probably just running the Rapid Ash into the blue fight. And so, go. Ideally, you have a Dodrio, so you can just use Drill Peck instead of having to worry about Fire Blast. Yes. Otherwise, you have to worry about the range. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to worry about hitting it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, with the Doduo. You can do it with just the Doduo, but the range is not kind. No, it is not. Especially being minus attack. Yeah. Getting rid of all the folks that have evolved. Matt going through the cutscene that you do have to actually go through. Because if you end up skipping that Brock cutscene, you don't get the T, so you can't get an Assault. Like, get an Saffron. I had to backtrack and go grab the T because I ended up skipping it in my race. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> was... Yeah, there was a lot of time lost in my race off of that. It was just like, why? It's pretty hard to skip him, too. You have to be really <laughs> far down. <laughs> I was really far down on my yet. Wait, how did I just skip that excuse? There is a wait. No, I don't have tea. Freak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That would have been really nice if you could just do that, and then it's just faster, but no. No, you still have to have the T. Hey, at least you don't have to go inside the building to get the T now. This is true, but you still have to mash through everything, which is annoying. Oh, yeah. Amber, unfortunately, having Dodrio spawn right on top of her. Yeah, so this, right, right down here, it looks super scary moving like this, but... Those trainers all have like basically single tire vision. So it it's super clean, super easy to get through. Though if you hit one of them, they are very difficult. Yes, this is true because you don't actually happen to have your star me yet. No, I have when learning, I hit those more often than not, and it would it sends you back to the last Poco Center. It's not great. Yes, it does. When learning, so beginners, I would generally tend to go to the far left and go behind the benches, and you're mm -hmm. clean that way. Which is actually what I used to do pretty much all the time. Um, but now it, you can very quickly just go down the right side and just kind of snake your way get, through like Amber did. Yeah, as long as you get off the road for that one trainer on the far right, you can just stay on the road. Correct. Also, Matt here, you'll notice, will run into the Pokeball with the Rhyhorn, despawning the ride Pokemon, then you hug the fence, and you dodge that trainer entirely up there. If you do not hug the fence, it will hit you, and, well, good luck. Yeah. Also not a trainer you want to hit. No, it is not. And we'll see the getting off the mount Pokemon and dodging a trainer in Victory Road as well. Yes, we will. Meanwhile, Iron has the Psyduck, and Matt quickly has the Pony. So both Iron and Matt quickly going through and getting the Pokes on Route 17. Amber now has Sea Skim, which basically gives you Surf. So in this, you don't have HMs that you have to teach. It, Eevee or Pikachu just learns skills, basically. So you don't even have to worry about learning an extra move. Oh, Tangela. Nice. Wiggly move. Tangelina Jolie. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, no star you yet. Also, these trainers have sniper vision. Yes, they do. Also, that trainer on that island, I have hit before, not even facing him. I press A to get in the water and instead ended up talking to that trainer. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, no, you, that's, that's not a fisherman you want to face. It's bad. 1081, though, on CP is really good. Nice. Hopefully she has a very good star. She will need to catch the coughing. That will be the final catch that Amber needs to get. And you'll notice, like we mentioned earlier, Amber is only using one player catch on this because when you're in the water, you can only use one character. You cannot summon your second right. character. So Iron just needs Ponyta right now. And we're finding the coughing. And that is Amber's final catch of the run. Amber will have several Evos, and then the free gift, Lapras, and Oregon later, but... Yeah, that should... Now it's just movement and RNG. But a different type of RNG. Decent star... It's 
Got good special attack. Decent speed. Yeah. I do believe this Star U at 46 will actually be fast enough to outspeed. It might be a speed tie with the Rapidash. But it's got good special attack, so that's a pretty decent Star. We'll see once they teach Scald here. You want to see 117 speed. That will speed the Rapidash. On Blaine. One fifteen, so it does not outspeed. Then opting to set up the repel to get through the remainder of mansion here without seeing any pokes. So Samuel, like Ted here, will lead a Electrode, which will always outspeed because it's just base 150 speed is insanely fast. It does have T-Bolt. Yeah, setting up Repel in here after you have all your pokes is super good. Getting the T-Bolt on the Rapidash, well, that is ideal. now skip the bed hill you do have a bed heal that you can get um you can completely opt to skip it here but if it t bolts into the star me um crit would kill you or it can paralyze And after this fight, there is also a Firestone that they will probably opt to pick up for that final poke. A 1075 CP on Iron Star. Nice. That was a quick star. Don't you love sleeping in a random bed inside a creepy abandoned mansion that's actually fun? <laughs> right, Greta? <laughs> Let's just casually do that. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Okay, so Iron has his star. Now Matt needs to find his. Star not wanting to show up here for Matt. It's really unfortunate. There it is. Oh. Finally gets it. That lure was starting to get low. <laughs> yeah, it was. 1057, so the lo lowest of them as far as the CP. Is basically takes the combined average of your stats. Higher CP generally means you have better stat spread. Doesn't necessarily always mean that you're going to have a higher special attack or speed. Which are the two main stats that we worry about. I, Matt now taking over going into mansion because Iron did have to still get the tentacle. Matt didn't. So having the advantage on pokes here allows Matt to retake the lead. Matt with an insanely fast star you, but very, very low special attack.
96 speed. Jeez. That thing is insanely fast. That is guaranteed to outspeed the Rapidash and very well might have an opportunity to outspeed the Raichu on Rival 5. Yeah. And Iron's star is also looking pretty solid. 46 at 84, 93. Very fast again, but a better special attack. Yes. So Iron again with a decent star. Um, looks like Amber happened to have the highest of the special attack, while Matt and Iron had a very fast speed. Yes. Rapidash here comes in, will not outspeed this Rapidash, Rapidash so you will take the Flare Blitz. Does have quick attack, but I don't think they're in range for the. No, we're not at 48. No. So it's not really. If your minimum special attack, that nine tails can very much be a range to actually kill. Yeah. Grimer. And I believe that's the last catch he'll have to make. That is the final catch for Matt, correct? So everybody is. Um. Yeah. Everybody has all the catches. Yeah. So we're just waiting on Evos. And now we start our tour of taking down the gems we should have beat a long time ago. So you'll notice we completely go, like, we beat Misty, and then we just catch everything and go all the way to Blaine, skipping all of the gyms between. So Blaine is normally in order the seventh gym. We take it on third. And because we now have a level 46 Staryu, um, you'll notice that Starmie, oh, Starmie, sorry, Starmie will now out, like, completely wall the remainder of the game you will be very much over leveled on the erica and surge fights um but because you're so over leveled it's they're just spam psychic on erica and spam scald on surge and you're clean yep this is the this is also the gym where trainers can't see anything Another advantage is just hugging corners, hugging the walls, and you're clean. They just... Vision in this game is horrible. Also, if they are spinners, their vision is completely turned off until they're looking straight. So as they turn, their vision turns off entirely. It's like they turn blindfolded. It's weird. Matt also dodging the bed heal. Yeah. Iron will likely have to take the bed heal, however. Yeah. Will he hit a range on the um, 
can blink Jim here? He may... I More than likely, the Ninetales will probably be a range, yes. I don't know what the special attack exactly was. It was, that looked like it was minimum special attack. So it will probably be like a 13, 14 of 16 range. Yeah, it's gonna be close. And we're getting her the Dodrio so that we can use that on the rival or the blue fight. Yeah, having that there, cause drill pack is 100% accurate, whereas Fire Blast is like 80, I think? 80 or 85? Yeah, that sounds about right. Which I, we'd far rather be able to have the 100% accurate drill pack and be perfectly fine. Yes, if you're out of X specials and you have to use Fire Blast, having to do Hydro Bomb and Fire Blast <laughs> is just not a good time. <laughs> no, it is not. Also, Amber here going into Surge's gym, which will be the, which will give you the final move, which will give you the TM for the final move for the Starmie. Opting to take the shop in Vermilion, and then also we'll do another quick shop in Silvco, well in Saffron. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've seen that before. I've seen it a couple times. It's usually there if you're low on like X special attacks or something. Ah, gotcha. Or on healing going into Archer. That too. You're low on healing, you can do that, which is a nice play. Or if you're low on X specials, you can also make that play. More often than not, it's the healing that you're low on. Yeah. Amber with the God Cans, Pog. So in this game, those scans are guaranteed, whereas basically Gen 1 and 3, re well, basically the Gen 1 and then the Gen 3 remakes of Gen 1, um, those aren't guaranteed, they're random. Which kind of gets really, really annoying, so being able to have them guaranteed is just really fast. Yes, having to memorize the pattern of if it's not in the scan, it's probably in the scan, makes things a little more complicated. Matt's already through with Blaine, and Iron just barely finishing up the Blaine fight. Finishing up Surge, getting the Thunder, and then we'll head over to Sofco. Yeah, getting Thunderbolt here, which, yeah, by the way, Stormy does get Thunderbolt, even though it is a water type. So the final moves that Stormy will run will be Scald, Hydro Pump, Psychic, and Thunderbolt. Kind of an insane move set, gives you a really good coverage. Then evolving the Vulpix here. We only really have one more Evo with the uh, Weezing going into, or the Coffin going into Weezing. Yep. 
Matt, meanwhile, will have two with the coughing and the wheezing and then the side hook. Yeah. Looks like just a single... Nope, two... Should just be two for iron as well with the grimer and the tenta. Although, yeah. rapid... No, it doesn't look like they have rapid ash vault either. Yeah, iron no. actually having three that needs to evolve. Because Arcanine is just as fast of a ride poke as Pony. Mm -hmm. And while close to Trubs, there's still that time, the, that extra. Yeah, they're just basically like. Time. Iron just barely starting, whereas Matt's just barely finishing. Yeah. Matt is a couple minutes ahead of here, but it's relatively close. Yes. So going into this fight against Blue is... You, you meet one of the first Pokemon that, and probably the only Pokemon that Starmie cannot deal with, which is the Executor. So we have to bring in, that's why we bring in the Dodrio to drill back. Correct. Yeah, because Executor being Grass Psychic resists all four of Starmie's moves. So we run a two controller fight on this. Yeah, we just boost, boost the trio and then boost army, and it's really easy at that point. Correct. If you have a high enough special attack on the Starmie, you can just skip the X special attack and guarantee the kill with Skull. I think that's like one. 22 or 123 special attack to guarantee that. You have to have a pretty good special attack to be able to guarantee that. If you don't have enough special attack, or X special attack, you can also try hydro pump. You can. That's just kind of... It's... it's <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be in that spot. And no, you don't. You don't. So Amber quickly coming up on the worst fight in this game. Yes. The dreaded Archer 2 double fight. It is a double fight between with you and your rival and then Archer and a Team Rocket Grunt. Fortunately, everything except for the uh, Muck has a super effective move on Starmie. And Muck has Toxic, Protect, and Minimize. It's kind of bad, so you want to take out the muck as fast as possible. So you immediately take out the muck, but that electrode can use Slenderbolt, which you do not want to see. You want to see self destruct, no protect turn one. This fight can waste time. There's the protect and self destruct. Nice. Well, at least you get the self destruct here. Protect is fine. Um, it's a little bit annoying. Ideally, the Pokemon that comes in, decides, like the Weezing, decides to hit into the Cubone. But again, because Toxic and Minimize are bad, you want to just take out the Muck first. And you get Protect from the Weezing. That's a really good nice. turn. Wait, no. No, it's not there. No, it was protect on the muck. It tried to protect again, but because oh. it's it lowers the chance of it being able to double protect, it dodged. Flamethrower and a Cubone is fine, though, so you just take out the Eradicate. Actually, you take out the Weezing and go back first, and then you pray for double Boomerang onto the Eradicate. 
say. All of these Pokemon have super effective moves. They Pokemon. really do. It's very painful. <laughs> you have to prioritize which one's going to actually kill you versus the Sucker Punch, which is just going to chip or make huge chip damage on you. Yeah, so ideally you see double Bone Ring from the rat into, like, from the Cubone into the rat. Yeah. You get one there. Because if you see it double target into the Raticate, it will, like, the Cubone can kill that rat. But clean fight. Matt's now going to go into the blue fight here relatively quickly. Thankfully, you do also get a very quick full free heal right here. Yes. Because oddly enough, as much as we just took out Archer, he's going to come right back and try again. <laughs> Archer was about a six turn, I do believe. It was either a five or a six turn. It wasn't too bad. Pretty clean. Thankfully, Muck didn't get the double protect. It tried to double protect, but didn't work. Yeah. Yeah, double protect would have been real bad. It gets especially bad if it ends up, like, if you don't kill it and it just starts setting up minimizes and then protects and then it just starts missing everywhere. Now we have the easiest Jesse and James fight. Yep. Ideally, the wheezing targets the Dodrio, so you don't have to worry about healing on the Starmie. Yes. Which, unfortunately, it does, so you'll just Psychic into the wheezing and then heal the Starmie. Mm -hmm. Good thing is it, also, it didn't also paralyze. Yeah, if it pairs, that's really bad. Well, it's not terrible. You just have to worry about healing off the para, which is annoying, but whatever. And in this game, it doesn't reset your speed in turn. No, it does not. Similarly, the hard way. <laughs> similarly, when you set up an X special, like an X speed in this game, it doesn't take effect immediately. It no. waits until the next turn. Yes. Which is why you, later on, you'll find that we set up X speeds early. Just so we guarantee outspeed when the Pokemon comes out. So like on Rival 5, we lead the Rapidash, which will bait either Marowak or Vileplume in. Mm -hmm. And we'll X speed on the second turn of that fight to guarantee to outspeed the Rapidash. Well, sorry, the Raichu on Eevee, or if you're running Pika, outspeed the... Um, Jolteon. Okay, Matt, now on to the Archer fight. Hopefully you got a good fight here. Again, you want to see no protect from the muck and self-destruct. That guarantees both. There he goes. Perfect start. That takes out both Pokemon yeah. immediately. Nice. And then you can double target into the um, Weezing and Golbat and hopefully get a double target into the a double Bone Meringue into the Raticate and you can get a nice easy three turn fight. Iron also getting into that fight. Yeah, Archer's just going into the fight now. Well, Iron is just going into that fight. 
Yeah. Okay, gets the turn into rat. Okay, now he just needs to get the bone ring again into the rat, and he's clean. Does rival actually help here? He doesn't. That's unfortunate. So Matt will have a four-turn fight. Yeah. Whereas Iron, unfortunately, had a protect self-destruct, so now he has mm -hmm. to take out the muck while worrying about the gold bat that will take it, like, come in. Ideally, the gold bat there and it hits the keybone. Fortunately, he does not. So you want to see the Raticate now at least target the Cubone once. If it doesn't, Iron will have to heal the Starmie. Which it looks like it does target in. It did. And then gets the Bone Ring perfect. Nice. Now you want to see another Bone Ring into the Raticate. And it's a nice four-turn fight. And gets it. Nice. Both Matt and Iron with four-turn archer fights. Clean. And then with Tentacool evolving, that'll be his last Evo. Did he already right? evolve the Grimer? Pretty sure he did. Maybe he did. No, he evolved the Ponytail. I didn't think Grimer evolved yet. No. Yeah. That's yeah, already done with all the evolutions. Iron still has the Grimer. Yeah, you're right. So while it looks like Iron and Matt are relatively like neck and neck, Matt is a little bit further ahead. Meanwhile, Amber going through and about to go into Sabrina. Which more often than not, you see light screen turn one. You definitely want to see light screen turn one because you do have to set up two X special attacks and then an X speed. Yes. So getting light screen turn one allows light screen to fade right after you take out the Mr. Mime. If you don't get that, you will have to worry about healing just to waste a turn. Because you cannot have that up while oh, Alakazam comes in. Because otherwise you will not one-shot it. Yeah, light screen turn one or no light screen. No light screen is really good. <laughs> yeah. Light screen turn two, very bad. I've only ever seen no light screen once. Okay, light screen turn one is figured. Good. The other thing you need to be paying attention to is if they end up getting special defense drops. That can significantly cause, like, that may cause you to need to heal, but thankfully Amber dodges that and they're clear. Pretty straightforward fight. Um, against the Giovanni, again, he leads Persian, which has fake out, so you always set up your X special attack first, and then you just scald across the board. Because the army is faster, it will outspeed the Persian. But fake out has priority. Iron able to also dodge the para. 
on Jay and Jay and heal up in fight before Giovanni. So Matt's through the Giovanni fight and Iron just going in. And Amber will quickly be moving to Koga here. Welcome in, Raiders. Um, we are in the middle of the race between Amber, King Trubs, aka Matt, and then Iron. Um, Iron just barely going, getting through Giovanni in Sof. And Matt's about to go into Sabrina relatively quickly. And Amber's in the lead going into Koga. Um, Amber's pretty decent. Not fat, like it didn't outspeed the Rapidash, but it's got decent special attack. Yes. Um, Matt's is mitten special attack, but it's insanely fast. Iron is again new, kind of mid special attack, but also very, very fast. So none of them have a very good special attack, but. Iron and Matt happen to have insanely fast stars. For Amber, no, it will not outspeed the Raichu. Matt's might outspeed the Raichu. Matt's might outspeed the Raichu. Yeah, it'll be real close. Uh, for the Pidgeot? It should. The Raichu is the issue. It did not outspeed the Rapidash. Amber should outspeed the Pidgeot because they will also get a level in Giovanni's gym. So they should be okay. May not though. We will find out. Matt's and Irons definitely will. The issue is will it outspeed the Raichu for Matt? Amber getting this turn one protect on the muck, so dodging the poison. And gets a nice skull. Perfect. Nice. No protect. That's really good. Yes. Yeah, Kaden is the real gym leader in here because that muck does have minimize and protect. Which if it starts spamming minimize and protect, it, it can get to be a real pain. You do also have to set up a special attack turn one. You just don't want to see minimize, so you have to end up having to worry about hitting. You mentioned that you love Curious, what? Why would anybody love Caden? That thing is. Caden's a pain. I hate Caden. Yes, I have. I've seen Moonblast, yes. I. See, Sheep, I've died multiple times to Caden. To minimize spam and just never hitting, and then finally just killing with Moonblast multiple times over. It, it's, it's a pain. And do basically the same thing on Koga setting up turn one. Yep. Dodge the poison. I ideally, you get the protect, which Ember did. Um, and then, again, everything in this gym has protect, so. It wastes you can, so much time. You can very easily lose a lot of time or save a lot of time if you just don't get any protects. Yeah. Also, waste a lot of PP. Grizz loves Caden so much that they spend four, up to 14 turns hanging out. Trubs gets to turn one light screen. Uh, 
And we have iron going into the... Unfortunately, he gets the burn from the Scald. Ooh. You don't want to see his burn there, because again, that can give you the status lag. Yeah. Amber cleanly through Koga. Yeah, Amber's flying. Yes. Fly. Amber grabbing the last secret technique, the pushy push. Strong push. Yeah. Amber doing what I do, tend to leave the elixir till after Koga. Yeah, it gives you a lot more moves later. It does. Ah, uh, it should be sub 302 pace. And Amber like is one. flying. Yeah. Like, sub-230, Koga, you're flying. Matt about to go into Koga, where Iron now quickly finishes up S Sabrina. And Evie telling Amber to stop and smell the flowers. Yeah, that that's the worst cutscene. I hate it. It's like, why do you have to do this? Just let us go. You, you already took me back to Pallet Town. And now I have to watch another cutscene. Ergo got a 301.28 with a 228.56 Koga, fair. Yeah, I could definitely, this should, eat, this should definitely be sub 302 pace for Amber. Yes. It is a good foreshadowing. Also true, Gretic, true doesn't make it any less annoying. <laughs> so here in Giovanni's gym, you'll notice Amber chooses to go up behind and talk to the trainer, because if you don't, and you go above, he will walk forward and block the blue, ti blue spin tiles, which then means that you have end up taking on two extra trainers and it's just slower. Only we could skip it, right? <laughs> Iron's not too far off of Matt, no. Matt does have a little bit of an advantage being through Caden already. Mm -hmm. but they're close. Why is everyone's victims already done? <laughs> what happened in the last race? Or go upset you. Dang. Dang. Oh, 
What was the time from people at Nergo? 305? Oh, geez, really close then. Hard to win when Starmie dies. The, the, yeah, no, that's gross. That it twice. Oof. What? Oof. Oof. Ouch. That 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 just feels bad. That feels bad. That's a feels bad. And we're getting a pretty easy two controller through Giovanni. Yeah, going two controller there is the optimal play. That will guarantee that you're you'll live the earthquake from Doug Trio, and then you can just kill. Yeah, it also leaves you enough HP to go into rival afterwards. Which you can set up the X defense, but you typically have to. No, T-Bot's absolutely still cracked. It's just bad luck, which it's the nature of speedruns. It happens. Introduce you to Caroline sleeping. What? What? That's disgusting. That's disgusting. <laughs> Iron also through Koga. Amber finishing up Giovanni and heading over to the rival fight. I didn't see the last speed, but I assume that it's not fast enough to uh, outspeed. No, it will not outspeed. I didn't see if it's going to outspeed the Pidgeot. Um. I'd imagine it probably will more on often than not you do. I almost never see speed bad enough not to. But no, Amber will not outspeed the right you. you for sure. Yeah. That takes good speed to manage that. That just won't yeah. happen. It's like 140. Easily outspeeds. Yeah, good. And this is where you'll see Amber set up the second, well, the first X speed. Just in case Raichu comes out sec like third. That way you're guaranteed to outspeed the Raichu and you're fine. Right, well, comes to them. Perfect. So you always just go to plus four here. Um, when you're running Pika, you plus four may not always be enough to kill the Jolteon, so sometimes you might need it. You might see your Pika go to plus six. But I don't think any of these stars are good enough to be able to go plus four on Lorelei. No.
So will we see Amber go for the onesie Naomi? Actually, no, don't. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Do it for the content. You're so far ahead, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Do not 1C Naomi. That is a bad fight. <laughs> oh, especially considering I don't even think that Hydro Pump at plus 2 even guarantees kill on... on Amber star. Close enough. The other two stars, definitely not. Oh no. Absolutely <laughs> not. But goes for the same. Matt, Matt won't even guarantee the range on Dragonite, so it may, no. Matt's gonna have a time. Matt will almost assuredly go plus two, like two C on the Lance fight. Oh, yeah. This is the Hydro Pump that hits the Skull. And thankfully targeted the Rapidash. Yeah. <laughs> Mac cleanly through the Giovanni fight here. Because he outspeed everything else, it's just simply scald. Just keep pressing A. Ideally, he doesn't put you to sleep here. Yes, ideally. <laughs> nice. Hey, T-Bolt unfortunately gets the para and now Ooh. puts the sleep. That's just mm. unfortunate. T-Bolt also not doing enough damage there to two-shot with T-Bolt, so it has to go for the Scald. Iron is going for a one control there, Starmie. And gets the Slash. Interesting. Yeah. Cleanly through. Nice. Okay, Amber quickly coming up on the hardest skip in the run, known as the Alexa skip. Yes. You'll see Amber run into a corner, dismount the Rapidash, and run around and basically hug a hug a corner. Colby's it might be harder. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is. You can lose so much time on messing this up. So it's not just the fight, it's the heal yep. afterwards. Cleanly through. The... Nice. And doesn't get the Colby on Etchy. <laughs> <laughs> Which was so weird. Yeah, that was that was a strange one. <laughs> it's like I'm just facing and talking to her and instead it's Kobe like what? 
I've been ignored for too long. Yeah, playing it safe, going right to up to the top and talking to her from up above. Just hide her twice. Gets it on the third show. Yes, there we go. There's the there's the clip. Or it's like, um, that just happened. Boulder Bush. Yeah, this this one's a really long one. Fight. I'll put him out second, which is normal. Good. It's either nor like it's either that or Marowak, either or. Yeah. If it's so Marowak it's second, you X speed and go scald. If it's viable, you just keep the psychic and go X speed. Iron Stormy low on Skull, like low on Psychics, because it looks like they opted to go Elixir early. Yeah. Definitely start have to start raffining those moves with the early Elixir. This is why I like going the later one right after Koga. I have more later, so I'm fine. Yeah. It's not just this fight, you have to... It's nice to save the Psychic for the Venusaur inside as well. Yup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that early, like, my honest opinion, the earliest you should ever Elixir is after Kaden, if you need yeah. it. Yes, if Gaten gives you a hard time with protects and minimizes. <laughs> then I can see that needing to yes. happen, yes. Um, usually you shouldn't have to, which usually more often than not, you should always just be able to do it after Koga, and you're fine. It leaves you enough PP for everything across the board. Mm -hmm. So even if Koga goes really bad, you're fine. If Koga goes super bad, you can always end up hydro pumping on, like, the, like if your PP is super low, yeah, you, you may can. have to. You like I've had to hydro pump on the Venomoth, mm -hmm. and just in case it goes for protect, and then I psychic. And if it doesn't, and I hit, great. I am unsure. I'm not. No, I don't know what Iron's PB is. I yeah. Amber onto the lower lie, which Amber will definitely have to go to plus six here. Three ten forty eight. Okay. So Iron on PB pace. Nice. Opting for the one control. Oh no, the two controller. Two clear. The second character is off. Awesome. I was like, don't opt <laughs> for the onesie, no! <laughs> don't do it! It's not worth it. Does iron hit the hydro. Nice. They do. And doesn't kill. 
Ooh. Unlucky. Doesn't get the range. Amber went for the three setup. On Warline. Yeah, one one controller strummy would have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> this is yeah, th there's a reason nobody <laughs> ever decides to go one controller Naomi. It's just a bad idea. Cause that that Kangaskhan does have crunch, it can lower your speed, it can like lower your defense, it can crit. It, it, it's just a very, very bad way. Yes, when it's labeled as risky, it means it. <laughs> not a casual risk. Oh no. <laughs> it is not. I've never gone for it. Trev's going for the Lexus skip and nails Easily it. Easily gets it. And also playing safe, talking to Caroline up above. And get the Colby skip. See, the reason we actually talk to Caroline here is you don't have to worry about bad Pokemon that Colby has. Colby is a lot harder to take out. Yeah. He, like, leads with an Electrode? I don't remember what he leads with. I think so. Colby's just a bad play. <laughs> Everyone being careful with Caroline after that. She's run the other day. Not yes. wrong. Not wrong. Yeah, the right blue one does some weird things to your talk hitbox. We see Amber get faint. Have we seen anybody get faint in the tournament yet? Yes. Okay. Iron, meanwhile, coming up on the Alexa skit. Yes. And Amber cleanly threw Bruno. She did switch into Drio, so she... Or they'll probably... She is going in. for the 2C. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that when they switched out the Rapidash earlier. Yeah, Iron also cleanly threw Alexa. Nice. And also playing it safe, talking above. Yeah. So everyone cleanly through the Alexa skit. Fight the waste about a minute and a half if you hit it. Yes, I really like these two these two controller Agathas. Yeah, it, it's it's a very fast Agatha. I like it. It's so much safer too. It, it's you do lose a little bit of time to it. To be fair. Mhm. Mm but it, it's pretty safe. He's going for the full restore, so maybe it going... It looks like T Matt's going to go for the 1C, probably. Yeah.
Tipa, you're you're just as good. It's just a matter that you just got really, really trolled. You got really unlucky. Looks like Amber's gonna go for the one C plants. Amber's on a really good pace. Yeah, she's. Amber is absolutely flying. Correct. Turn two does come in, like does come in oh, on turn right. two. That's right. There we go. Hyper Bean. <laughs> it's a Edda Hyper Bean. <laughs> Leave Iron also grab the full restore. Yeah, I do believe so. At a beam. <laughs> yeah, this is actually very true. Yeah, Ed Iron is on PB pace. He is. Getting through Lance. Yep. Nine seconds ahead, leaving Victory Road. Nice. Nice. Amber into champ fight. Uh, this should be 301, yeah. Doctorio, no! Thankfully dies to the quick attack there. There you go. <laughs> Don't tough it out for me. It's okay. If it doesn't, if it tops that out, that, that does lose about 20 seconds. It, it loses a bit of time. <laughs> But Matt cleanly threw Bruno. So we'll quickly see Matt coming in. Yeah, Matt's about a fight ahead of Iron right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, second place has been close for me. Most yeah, of the it, run. It, They've stayed it's been a very back. close race pretty much the entire way through. Like, they kept going back and forth, but Matt had the advantage on catches, so by the end of it, Matt was a little bit further ahead. Yeah, it's probably about a mid-301. Yeah. Best non empty time. Uh. Amber's through it. Amber cleanly through. This will definitely be a mid 301, which is a very, very good run. Yeah, that's solid. It'll definitely be an increase on the last run in the tournament, which was 303. And Matt threw... At least through the setup phase of Agatha. Yep. So this should be an easy play me through Agatha. Yeah, three oh one thirty four. Really, really good run. Solid. Iron going into the 1C Agatha. It has to go with the 1Cs here. It, yeah. EB pace is very, very close. Uh, power of Love, the, par the para. Power of Love is a really good turn two there. Nice. She gets iron cleanly through. Nice. Trump still is a range on this Dragonite, so yes, it'll be sending in the two controller. Yeah, I'm going XB turn one, and then it's going to be a matter of oh, oh no, oh no. Forgot to uh, elixir. elixir. Oh no, doesn't kill this. Cedra, which is fine. Thankfully, the miss. And now can set up. Dang. Also, Amber, congratulations on the 301. Yes, thank you, thank you. That was... <laughs> that was a run. <laughs> you had a decent star. Wasn't terrible. I, I... I feel like the theme of this run was getting luck that was just good enough that I didn't lose time. Mm hmm Yeah. It's like... Pretty much the first two hours of this race, I was so concerned about my catch count and my catch situation. Right. And like, an end of rock tunnel, like the Q-Bone spawning right at the end saved me. Gashly spawning right at the end of tower saved me. 
Pony and Dodio at the end of 17. Yeah, you got some really good luck late that saved. Otherwise, that could have been far worse. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when I saw the Starmie stats, I knew right when I right when I uh, candied the 46 that it was like one IV good enough that I would have yeah. Pidgeot. Right. I, had, I had looked it up in advance. Because I had a race yeah, like a few weeks ago where that fight absolutely just completely destroyed me. So I needed to know when specifically I could outspeed that. When do you was, always outspeed it? Uh, if you have 87 speed at level 46, then you okay. always outspeed. Okay. So under that, you're not guaranteed to. Yeah. Unless you get some AVs. Yeah, if you get AV, so I, I don't think I got a single speed AV, at least up until I don't know that you fight, did. Though. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. It, it's been a range. good raise, though. Like, Matt and I are going to have been back and forth. Matt always did have the higher catch count, but. Yeah, this looks really close between them, honestly. Yeah. yeah they're not far off. They were back and forth the whole time. And Iron's on PP pace? Oh, really? Wow. Iron was nine seconds ahead coming out of Victory Road. Yes. Is Iron just doing one key everything, trying to go for that PB? Probably. Mm -hmm. All right. Which may actually pay out if Matt's Dodrio doesn't die. I was going to say, it's uh, going to be close. I mean, Dodrio usually dies, but, you know, you can it always should, get misses. Yeah. Yours no. nearly didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 was, I was thinking advanced. Like if okay, I, I had heard somebody else think Dodrio had lived Power of Love, and I was thinking before like, if you get Power of Love, do you just stall a turn? And my my thinking was yes, you do. He's ha having to select those extra moves. Oh, that is an attack on Star. Goes into oh, the no. Starmie. Wow. Oh no. Okay. Uh, oh no. Oh no. Like, yeah. Dodrio does live. He lives. Okay. And I am going in right now. If I am does it once, happen. this just might be close. Cool. <laughs> okay, go is going in 2C. Okay. Oh, and goes in with Rapidash. Yeah. Yeah, Iron's on peak, I see, like, you kind of have to do with Rapidash. Okay, that's fair. Because you have to set up that extra yeah, extra set up for the, the extra Jolteon. Expect, yeah. Ah. And Iron's Sidar is not good enough to go plus four. Mm hmm. Man. Trace really loving to target these Starmies here. Right? <laughs> Their stars were insanely fast, just not great special attack. None of you had a good special attack star. I mean, mine was okay. I mean, it wasn't terrible. No. Matt's, what I think, was like zero or one IV. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. It was so Iron, bad. Iron's had a healthy mix of speed and attack or and special attack. But yeah. Yeah, zero IV. It was so low. But Matt cleanly threw. GG Matt. GG. Well, Iron still PB this, though. Yeah. What is Iron PB? I know it's in the 310 uh, range. 310 40s, something like that. Let's see. Uh, I think it was like a 43, 310 43, something. It's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be really close. Three ten forty eight. Yeah, this is going to be extremely close. Right. It's possible. I think it PBs, but it's close. It's it's going to be really close because of the 2C. I think it does. 
Yeah, yeah, that does. Yeah, this yeah, this apparently. PBs. Iron will PB here. And Matt finished with three hundred nine forty. GGS. Good job, Matt. Hello, Matt. GGS on the race. Thank you, GGS. I I GGs. thought I had you for a while there, <laughs> and uh, honestly. My mistake at the very beginning of the run, I didn't pull my backup EV. I ran with a jolly nature. Oh, it, yep. It, yeah. it legitimately, it cost me, I think, six turns from Rocket HQ through the end of Tower. So, yep. That, it cost that you right a lot. There, yeah. it, it cost me a ton there. Um, I didn't get the experience points. The, the Raticate, I didn't get the Raticate that I was aiming for when I got the Pidgey. <laughs> And unfortunately, you ended up seeing, what was it, two or three Kangas? Two Kangas, and one was glowing. You should have gone for it. <laughs> I, I should have. I should have. I didn't get a glowing grab. I just, it was oh, it yeah. was rough for experience for me for, for the run with a jolly nature. But I made the best of it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there I was up the PB. And I then thought having you might have seen a third just to the right at, toward the end. Because it spawned far right, right as you were leaving, kind of a thing. Uh, it was an onyx. Oh, I knew it was either that or an onyx. I was like, wait, is that a third? Yeah, it, it was an onyx. I <laughs> was foaming at the mouth though when a star. Like I wasted a <laughs> solid minute waiting for star you to show. Up, so. <clears throat> oh my gosh! Yeah, that was so bad. Like I'm just sitting there at the, the bottom PB? of the rock, like, where are you? Yeah, eight second PB. Yeah. Hey, congratulations, Dyer. Congrats. Gigi's. Thank you, Gigi. Yeah, that's I don't know how PB. that PB. That was, that, was, that was just silly. <laughs> we we so had terrible. a good race there towards the end. So. <laughs> you two are yeah. back and forth. The advantage, though, what Matt was... is ha Matt had the higher catch count. It's yeah. like I knew he was just slightly further ahead, but that was close yeah. all yeah, the way I, through. I, I normally have more catches than that going into the uh, yeah into the late game, so. Yeah, when I when I left uh, when I left Rival Three, I was on like a three oh four pace, and I'm like, okay, I can I can keep this pace as long as you know I don't get you know royally screwed somewhere, and yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So Matt, did you skip going down the ladder entirely then? For Moonstone, yeah. Wow. Oh, you did Moonstone step? Yeah, I did Moons because I was level so I was level fourteen, I think, if I remember right, right after Brock. Yeah, I got a oh, yeah. uh, I got an extra large rat on oh, uh, okay. two. Yeah. So yeah. I was I knew I was good on experience. That's why I didn't get you know Clefairy or anything like that. And then I happened to get Onyx to spawn right after uh, uh, Jesse and James there. But yeah, I was I was trying to pull out every stop I could to try and keep pace with him for today. <laughs> <laughs> I I was so scared that I was gonna like. I pretty much just barely scraped by everywhere. Like, if one thing, one thing didn't spawn for me, I was like, I wasn't, I didn't know what to do. But like, Route 17, I just got like everything I needed. Got, what was it? I was so close, Psyduck, right at the end. Pidgeotto, Raticate, Psyduck, <laughs> and then on the last patch of grass, I got Pony and Dodo to spawn. Oh, and I got wow. all of them, so. Worked yeah. out really well for me at the end. Iron actually had to wait around a little bit for the pony. It's like, come on, spawn, spawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my water route was really good, though. I got... Yes, it was. Good throws on both. Good throws on both. I got tentacle as well, so that was really good. Mm, yeah, 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 if you didn't have to get the tenta, you were ahead of Matt. Yeah, you 100% you would have beaten me just because of that, that tentacle. That tentacle cost you, unfortunately, but it was it was a good run overall. That was I'm, a good run. Yeah, I think I'm I think happy with it. My mid game could have been better. Is bad too. But a very good race overall. Yeah, it was fun. I was I was scared for a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I, everything ended up everything I just ended up falling in place for me, just like Which perfectly right when I Sometimes in these races, yeah. they have to. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was that was certainly. I'm I'm gonna go double check what the IVs are on this star you because this oh was this was certainly a star me of so all time. <laughs> <laughs> like you were insanely fast.
You had 96 at, speed at 46. I was 109 uh, special uh, attack at uh, yeah, I know. It was so oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I got a single AV the entire run. Uh, I spot. don't think special you did. Really a land of contract. Oh, man. I hit the range on Dragonite at the very end, though, which that was the first time I'd ever done two. That was fortunate. I didn't champ. think you would hit that. I'm like, dude, that special attack is solo. I don't know you're hitting this. What was I was a, I was a ten out of sixteen range on that. Ooh. Hey, nailed it. You know what? So what matters? Exactly. I didn't die. I thought I was going to, but I didn't die. <laughs> Especially after you forgot the. Elixir going into the oh, last fight. <laughs> oh my I'm gosh. kicking myself off over that one. I mean, it wasn't a huge deal. I think if I had a better special attack star me, I would have been perfectly fine. Like I wouldn't mm -hmm. have two shot it, but yeah, with the uh, with the minus or with the the zero IV special attack, it definitely didn't one shot without a uh, special no. attack. No. And then the early turnaround also hurt. No, after that, like when you went in, I'm like, dude, if Iron goes in with just one C, it's plausible. But yeah, I think the one C fight isn't that much faster. But that is, that assumes that your Rapidash dies, and that didn't happen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If your uh, if if your fight had gone differently from how mine went, where. I got the star me attack on turn one in champ and you did too. I think if your Rapidash had gotten knocked out, you would have you would have beaten me at the very end there. Yep. Yeah. It was that was actually that was close. I did a weird like catch route where I kept my my Pikachu had really bad stat bad, bad special attack, so I decided to use a candy on it to thirty so I could have better ranges mm -hmm. on J J three. Oh, and then, so okay. I had to wait to evolve Rapidash. So my Rapidash was under leveled, and it ha and I hadn't wrote, been riding it as much. So I was like, "Oh, it has less of a chance to die or to live." Power of love, <laughs> but he didn't even go for it. So that was yeah, whatever. No, on um, both you and Matt, the Pidgeot decided to target into the star, which was weird. Yeah, it definitely can't happen. Yeah, that was my first ever attempt at at two C. If y'all couldn't tell, when you know I called in support too early for Lance and. But GG's to Amber. That was that was a it was a it was a fun race. It was a good race. That was a very very good race. Yeah. Good race. I think like also I think that is my best race time. So very happy about that. Heck yeah. My best race time too. Heck yeah. <laughs> and you got a PV. We take seven those. Second PV, yeah. not eight. So yeah. Take it. Yeah, that we take a, those. That is a zero IV special attack star me. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Well, GG's, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks you. for commentating. That was, that was a good race. GG. Uh, it was definitely Matt. a good race. Yeah. And also, shout outs to our tech crew, Jordan. He did a, a great job for us today as well. Yes. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. As always. Thank you, Jordan. It's like four in the morning where you are. So. You. Yeah, we do have several more races coming up. So keep keep posted. Yeah, this should be good tournament round two. So plenty more. It should be a very very good tournament. Oh yeah, we got a lot coming up, and then we the do. Week. Yeah, we got tons. I'm very the excited. Third round tomorrow. should be a lot closer as far as the races go. Yep, tomorrow we got Echi, Aspect, and Joker, and I'll be on commentary for that. I'm very excited. I'm really excited nice. for that race. Ooh, that'll be fun. Yeah, that should be really, yeah. really good. Really good. Good friends with but all all three racers, so excited to see how they stack up. Yeah, have a good <laughs> night, stream. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> see you later. See you, everyone. Thanks for watching. <laughs>